you. Tonight I'm going to talk about first about God's love and His holiness. It's so good. God is so good. Everything about God is good. Let me tell you, I really like God. When I think about God, I really like Him because He is the best and He is the only one who is good and perfect and good in every way and loving in every way. God is a perfect God. When we really have God, our life will go higher and higher. Everything about Him is wonderful. His love and His holiness. His wisdom, His creation, His timing, everything is perfect. But the main qualities of God are His love and His uh, holiness. And these are very precious, very important, and are very important for us to understand to have a good relationship with God. So first I will talk about the love of God. Why is it important to live in the love of God? This is very important. And I hope that in the future when you witness with anyone, you will always tell them about the love of God. Not just tell them to believe in Jesus, but to tell them how good God is, how loving He is. He's truly full of love. He's, you know, there is no one like Him who loves so much. We all, basically, people are basically selfish. People are basically selfish. Now when people are changed by God, do they change right away? Not necessarily. Many Christians are still selfish. We're still self-centered. We just think about of ourselves and we don't think of dedicating our life to God and loving people. Now we do love people, but at the same time, we still have ulterior motives. We want something good for ourselves. But God accepts that and God wants to bless us. The thing is, if you want to look for real love in people, you don't find much. You don't find much real love. And God's love is very real. How real is God's love? That He will love us before we were born. He loved us before we knew about it. He's, you know, He already has a plan, a wonderful plan in our life. And then, you know, in Romans 5.8, but God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That God already knew us, He chose us, He loves us, He wants us to have His blessings, and He already chose us. And then He died for us while we were a sinner. Now let me ask you, have you heard of some great criminal in this country? Have you heard of some of the terrible things they've done? Think of one great criminal. Are they, are they murderers? Okay. Now if there's a murderer on the street, and then he walked on the street and he didn't pay attention, and then a car was coming, and a car was about to hit him, would you run up and jump to him and save him, and then you might be hit by a car? If this murderer might be hit by a car, would you jump up to save him? Do you? No one would. Now if it is your son, will you do it? You would do it if it is your son. If it's just one of your friends, will you do it? If it's a friend, you don't talk too much. You don't talk to him too much. Do you do it? If the car is really coming, and you're standing here, and the car is really coming, do you still go up there? You would think twice, right? But you won't do it for a murderer. But God died for us. Jesus died for us while we were a murderer, a sinner, a person in sin. You know, He loves us so much and He used so many different ways to draw us to Him. Now, my testimony is long. I'm not going to talk about it right now. But God used different things, including a scientist who wrote a physics book. And in the book, it says that this world is full of design and it came from God. And I said, why would a scientist write something like that? And I thought they all believed there is no God. And I was surprised. And I wondered, because at that time, God also worked in my life to think about why do I study so hard? At that time, I was 19 years old. Why did I study so hard? So my answer was, I worked study so hard so I can have a job. And then what after that? Well, get married. What after that? Have children. And what after that? Get old. What after that? Just sick. 
<laughs> one after that, die. <laughs> and then I said, is my life just making money, get married, and then get old and die? And I said, if it's like that, then I don't have to work so hard. I just enjoy life as it is. That's God guided me to think about the meaning of life. And then God let me read this science book. And then God guided Christians to help me. And the right person, because I asked the person, is there, are there proofs that there is a God? And she answered my question. If it's someone else, she, they might not be able to answer. And it made me very interested. So what I'm saying is, God uses different ways to draw us to Him. Let me ask you, were you drawn to Jesus by different ways that God used different persons, different ways to draw you to Him? Can you raise your hand if God drew you to Him in a special way? That God used different methods together. Can you raise your hand? If you think of God drawing you to Him in different ways, could you raise your hand higher? You know, God works in each person's life in a very special way. And also, after you're saved, do you automatically love God? Amen. Do you automatically love God? Do you all love God very much now? Yes. All the time? Yes. Okay, that's good. You all do that. Let me ask you, are there times that you sin and reject God? You know, God said, don't tell a lie and then you're still lying. Mm -hmm. That God moves us to follow Him and we still sin and don't follow Him. Did God give you up then? No. He keep working in our heart. Even though we did not love God sometimes, we did not obey God sometimes, He did not leave us and He did not just yell at us. But He keep moving in our heart. Is God very patient? Yeah. Have you taught your children English or mathematics or some other subjects? Do you have patience? <laughs> Why are you so slow to learn? I explained to you five times already, you still don't understand. Now if God is like that to you, how would you feel? You would say, God, you know, I cannot do it. But God is so patient. Think about how you experience Him. Is it wonderful that you can experience His peace and His love and His joy and take away your burdens and guide you all the way? God is very wonderful. Let me tell you, when I have time, I always think about the work of God. And I always enjoy thinking about His work. And the more I think about His work, the more I understand the goodness of God. And I say, God is so wonderful. God is so good. And I really want to dedicate my life to Him more and more. And when I do that, God, do, God did greater things in my life. And God set me free and give me more joy and love and then you know actually um, I want to say this I was converted in 1970 I became a Christian in 1983 I mean a pastor I'm sorry a pastor in 1983 15 years after I became a pastor in 1998 an evangelist laid hand on me it touched me and then in me I felt power like electricity went through me and I felt the love of God so powerful that come up to me that I cried for a long time. I felt so free. The tears just came out instantly. I was so free and I said, God, I didn't know I could experience you like that. I didn't know I could experience your presence like that, your love like that. I said, I never knew. It was to me in the past, even though I did experience this love and peace, but it was very weak. But at that instant, it was very powerful. I said, Lord, I want to continue to stay in your presence like that. And every day I spend long time praying. And I noticed that one day when I cried to Jesus, I said, Lord Jesus. <laughs> and then he made his power went through me. And then one, and then I said, oh, this is wonderful. And I cried again, Jesus, and the power go through again. And I really like that. I have immediate response of my prayer. And then one day in a meeting, I experienced joy. And then I said, this is wonderful. And then on that day, I kept loving God. And then joy kept coming up. I want to keep the joy of the Lord. I kept loving God. And the joy kept coming every day. 
and I spent a long time praying that day, and the next day, and the next day, and I keep the joy of the Lord. Any moment now, I think of Jesus, the joy will come through. Amen. God is so wonderful. On that day when the evangelist lay on me, the first thought is, I want to keep this close relationship. The second thought is, I want to be like that evangelist. I want to be able to bless many people. And so I spent much more time praying. And I noticed that now, I'm much more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And also when I pray for people, I can sense the presence of God over them very quickly. And people do experience the Holy Spirit very quickly, in a few seconds time. And you too can live like that. You too can live in the love of God, and then you'll be blessed. You know, many people were brought up with a lot of law, a lot of requirement. And people would say, you're not a good boy, you're not a good girl, I don't like you. Have you heard that kind of words? You're no good. The other kids are better than you. A lot of law. What happened is that even when people go into church, sometimes people say, Oh, Jesus, I don't love you enough. I have many sins. I'm weak. So many Christians are under the law. And then when the motivation to follow God is like this, I have to pray. I have to pray. I cannot, you know, I, if I'm lazy, God doesn't like me. That is motivation by the law. But if we are motivated by the love, it's very different. When I motivate people to, to pray, I would do, say it like this. Before you pray, God already knows your needs. Yeah. And He wants to bless you. So He knows your needs and He cares about you. So anytime you pray, you know that God is very happy. Actually, it's God who motivates you to pray. So you don't have to pray like this. Some people pray like this. Oh, Jesus, where are you? I'm very sick. I'm in pain. Please help me. Where are you? <laughs> Do some people pray like that? They say, God, you're far away. But we can learn to pray like this. You know, after experience God's love and also think about, after I thought about God's love so much, I would say, Oh, Lord, I know you're right here. <laughs> you're so happy to bless me. You want to bless me. You have so many blessings you want to give to me. So every time I pray, I say, Lord, you're right here. Hallelujah. I can enjoy you. I really enjoy prayer. So I hope that change your perspective of God. It's not like some people think of God as a judge, as a school principal. But we can think of God as someone who really cares about you, who really loves you, and He has so many blessings He wants to give you. You just trust in Him and you just talk to Him personally. Don't just talk to the air. Some people pray like this, Oh God, help me, oh Lord, help me. It's like talking to the air. Think of Jesus standing in front of you. You don't have to think about a face. Just think of Jesus. Jesus, I love you. I want you. I'm so happy to have you. Just think of Jesus in a very personal way. From your spirit, from your heart. Now Jesus said, worship in spirit and in truth. Worship from your whole spirit and your soul. The soul includes the mind, the will, and the feeling. Say it with me. The soul includes the mind, the will, and the feeling. So first worship in the, with the soul and then with the spirit. The mind. That means I agree with everything in the Bible. I like everything in the Bible. I like everything about God. So the mind is always saying, God is the greatest. God is the only one who is great. Who is the only one who is really good. There is no one like Him. So that mind, you know to me, I know that to follow God totally is the best thing that can happen to me. And then the will. I want to give my life to God totally. My life totally to God. My life, my time, everything. You know, I'm 65 years old. But I'm still strong. <laughs> and I want to keep myself strong and healthy as long as I can so I can serve God longer. You know, for many people at 65, they say, well, let me rest. I want to just enjoy life and relax every day. But I, I want to enjoy God too. I want to enjoy life and enjoy God. But I want to live longer and bless more people. You know, I go to some countries where the restroom really smell bad. You can 
you can tell the location of the restroom by smell. <laughs> you smell it. Oh, that way. <laughs> you can tell. And there are worms in the restroom. Flies. Spiders. There are places like that. It's very smelly. Very, you know, a lot of hospitals, a lot of flies. And the flies will eat the food together with us. I've gone to places like that. But why do I go there? I go there because I want to help people, raise some people, I want to train people. I don't just want to revive people's heart, you know. Because if I just preach a sermon, you say, oh, I feel good, hallelujah, praise the Lord, and then you go home. And then the next day you might forget about it. I want to train you in ministry. Each one of you, if you're willing, you can be trained to serve God. And then you start to serve God, then it, then it makes a lot of difference. That's what I just did with the three men. I don't just want to make them feel good or just to revive their spiritual life. I want to train them so they have a direction for ministry. And so, just now I'm talking about the mind, the will, my will, I say, my life is all for you. And God knows that. And God likes that. And God will bless those who really love Him. And then feel it. Now, for many people, they say, how can I feel this for God? He's so far away. But we can experience God all the time. Do you like the food you eat? Do you like to sleep? Do you enjoy that? You know, the food came from the love of God. He loves us so much, so He created mango, pineapple, bananas, apple, shrimp, all different kinds of food, all tasty, right? And then our tongue can taste the food. It's so good. Hallelujah. And water, even drinking water. Oh, feels so good. <laughs> you like to sleep? Feels so good. All this came from the love of God. It's very important that we learn to appreciate God. And then you have feelings, toward, strong feelings toward God. Do you have strong feelings toward your family members? Do you like them? But do you have a strong feelings toward God? Or even stronger? I hope you have stronger feelings toward God than toward your family members. My wife. We really love each other. We care for each other. When we take pictures, our head usually stick together. Or look at each other's eyes, and she's one of the greatest gifts, you know, other than Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and the spiritual gifts, she's the greatest gift for me on earth. She's really nice to me. I have good feelings toward her. But I'm going to tell you, my feelings toward God is much stronger. I don't want her to compete with God. God has the highest place in my life. And I hope that you too, when you think of God, you say, I like God. Can you say with me with feelings? I like God. I want to have God. I want to have a close relationship with Him. I enjoy God. Can you be like that? Now, let me ask you, have you noticed my expression when I preach? It's not a show. It's real. I really like God. Oh God, it's so wonderful. I really like God. And I hope every day you say, Lord, I like you. And God knows it. Let me tell you, this time in Pastor Church, I think it's the sixth person who told me that they dream about me before they met me. And you might say, what does that mean? That means God is leading these people to let them know to come to listen to me. Tuesday, I flew from Hong Kong. And that morning, and that is about noon time in Hong Kong, one of the church members, and the name is Rosie. Rosie, yeah. Rosie had a dream. And she was chased by someone, and she was in fear, and a lot of you know, worry and fear, and she ran away. And then she went to a house, and then she saw there were Chinese inside the house. <laughs> and then she knocked at the window, and then she went in, and then she saw me coming. 
but I had more hairs because <laughs> she saw me younger. <laughs> thirty some years old. When I was thirty some years old, I had a lot of hair, <laughs> but the eyes were the same, and the way I talk is the same. Also, I prayed for her. Instantly, she felt the love and the, the joy of the Lord. And then she woke up. And when she woke up, she was filled with joy. Now, in the beginning part of the dream, she was filled with fear. And then suddenly, she was filled with joy. Now, what I'm saying is, this is the work of God. It's not me. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. It's God who honors those who love Him. Amen. To confirm to people and tell people that He loves those who listen to Him. Obey him. Now, this is the sixth person. I'm going to, put, going to tell you all the six stories, but the sixth person that had this, that told me this. What I'm saying is, God will confirm you if you really follow him. Amen. So I hope you really say, God, you are my life, and you really have good feelings toward God. So, mind, will, and feeling. Say it again. The mind, the will, and the feeling. And then your spirit. How to worship God in spirit is in your heart and say, God is so wonderful that you worship God with your heart, the whole being. And I use this method for people who find this difficult. It's like thinking of crying out to God and your spirit ascend with your voice. Like this. Ah, hallelujah. It's like your spirit ascend to God. Ah, hallelujah. The other day we pray with Anesh and also some other people, and then they experience the joy right away. And I told her to, told them to cry out to God, and then immediately they can experience this joy. Now try this now. Ah, hallelujah. Cry out to God from your spirit. It's like your spirit sent to God. Close your eyes. Ah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you, Jesus. I want you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Cry from the Spirit. Do that every day. Now, has anyone experienced any peace or some joy just now? Jesus, Lord. Jesus, Lord. Anyone experience that right now? Just now? Can you raise your hand? Now, you do this every day. She did. You do this every day. Sooner or later, you experience it more and more. And God wants to bless you. Amen. In Psalm 139, verse 5, it says that He's in front of us and behind us, and He's laying His hand on us. He's with us all the time. You might say, well, how, how do we see God is with us? Let me ask you, when you sin, does God remind you? He reminds you, right? You feel guilty when you sin. So God doesn't forsake you even when you sin. So when you pray, will He forsake you? No. So if He comes to us when we sin, He will also come to us all the time. Actually, the Bible says that you know, He is in front of us and behind us and laying His hand on us. And also the Bible said that, that it's like a mother. Will a mother forget her suckling child? If she doesn't, even if she forgets, then I will not forget you. So He remembers all the time. He wants to bless us all the time. So we know that He really wants to bless us all the time. So if He thinks about you all the time, He's with you all the time. He's knocking at your door all the time. Jesus knocking at your door all the time. So you know that He's with you. So from now on, when you pray, you can say, Lord, you want to bless me. You don't have to say, God, your Father, if you want to bless me. You are with me now. You want to be with me. You have many blessings waiting for me. I hope you have this faith. Faith is. What is faith? When God works, I can relax. When God works, I can trust in Him. I know that God has many blessings planned for me. Do you believe that? Amen. Now when has He has many blessings planned for you, when you follow God, you'll be blessed your whole lifetime. Amen. Let me tell you, I have blessings in every area. Every area of my life, I find blessing. And I, I'm not boasting. I'm saying I'm nothing. But God blesses me, chose me while I was weak, and He wants to do the same to you too. So I hope you say, 
God has so many blessings, I want to follow Him all the way, and I know for sure every day He's loving me. Now, say this prayer of grace every day. Prayer of grace means to declare the grace of God every day. Because very often people will feel God is not loving us. It's very important that we believe that He's blessing us. So you can say this prayer of grace. Please, please follow me. Oh Lord, you are blessing me now. You are loving me now. You are with me now. You are laying your hand upon me. You have a wonderful plan in my life. You care about me. I have all reasons to be thankful. I have all reasons to be happy. Hallelujah! Now those are the prayer of grace. And then the prayer of response or, or worship. Lord, I love you. I desire you. I need you. I want you. I'm happy with you. I like you. I need you. Now these are prayer of response. That you worship Him and you love Him, you like Him. Is from us to God. And the prayer of grace is from God to us. So every day when you wake up, you say, Lord, you're loving me. Hallelujah. My life has special meaning. I'm special in the sight of God. So every day you start like that. Then every day you have strength. Right. That you know that you are special. And to follow God's will is the best thing that can happen to us. So this is the first part of our message. Live in the love of God. And live is in His holiness because His holiness is very beautiful. His holiness is very beautiful. If you have someone on earth here, some Christians, sometimes they don't like you. Have you had met have you met Christians that might not like you very much? They might have hurt you. But when you see them in heaven, will they turn the face away from you? Yeah. I don't want to see you. Don't talk to me. Will they do that? No. When they see you, they say, Oh, I'm so happy you're here. And then you say, you like me now? They say, for sure, I like you. In heaven, everyone will like you. No more, no more despise, right? Because there is holiness. Is the holiness of God beautiful? Yes. It's beautiful. Everything about God is loving and holy. When God, when Jesus came on earth and treated the people, it's always nice, always nice words. Even when Peter was about to deny him three times, did Jesus say, you are useless for three years, you follow me, and you're going to deny me three times? Did Jesus say that? No. He said, I pray for you so that you won't lose your faith. Amen. And when you turn back, strengthen your brother. Amen. So when he was about to sin, Jesus said, I have prayed for you already. I knew that you're going to deny me, but I pray for you so that you won't lose your faith. But when you turn back, don't you know, strengthen your brother. So Jesus accepted him. Jesus' word is always full of grace and mercy, full of goodness. He never teased people. He never hurt people. Do Christians sometimes tease people or hurt people? So that's not good. How about in the family? Do you fight? Do you yell at each other? Or do you come to God you know, in the family? You're always loving and always happy. You know, let me tell you about me and my wife. When we go to the house, we'll see which one is the first one to get the slippers for the other person. Now, it's not a big thing. It's just a sign of showing love. And when we eat, we eat with one hand. Where is the other hand? Holding hands. We always do things to make the other person happy. To make the other person feel loved. Is your wife or your husband or your family members the most important people in your life? But many people hurt them. So if you want to live in God's way, do you want to have a family that's always fight and quarrel? Or do you want a family that's loving and kind, always happy? So you want to change that. If your family is all holy and loving, and your church is all loving, 
loving each other and holy. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. If it's like heaven, is it beautiful? Yeah. So we want to live in the love of God and live in the holiness of God. That is the yeah. best thing that can happen to you. And your life, your whole life will be blessed. So you say, yes, Lord, I want to love you more. I want to devote my life to you. I want to love the church. I want to love the people. I want to bless the people. That's the main thing that you really want to follow God, follow His love and His holiness. Okay? So, I really like God. Everything, I like God. And then the next part of my message is about experience God evangelism. Very briefly, I will talk about that.